Hey, what's this button do? Makes bad coffee. How about this button? Makes bad coffee. What about this one? Bad coffee. How about if I turn this knob over here? That burns the bad coffee. Oh, great. Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Steven. Hey, I'm Jesse. Steven, what are we doing today? Today, Jesse, we are gonna make, try to make good coffee in a regular old coffee maker. This is a normal department store coffee maker. This is literally for my mom's basement. It is her old coffee maker. <laughs> so, gotta watch the end of the video, leave a comment, make sure you subscribe, because at the end we're gonna give away one of the, Maybe we won't give you this. Be, that'd be a lot. We'll give you a bag of coffee. How about that? Yeah. My mom also went with this bag. I don't I, know. I, who knows? <laughs> Either way, we're going to show you the best ways we know how to improve your coffee game with this here coffee maker. Okay. So, Jesse, we are going to brew up a whole pot of coffee today, a 12 cupper. Uh, you read the instructions. So, how are we going to do this? Every video we've made, we told you you need a scale to weigh out your coffee and your water. These guys tell you all you need is one tablespoon per cup of coffee. So 12 tablespoons to 12 cups of coffee. That does not sound like enough to That me. does not sound like a lot. And just for a frame of reference, I, you know, every company, who knows what they're calling a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming it's six ounces probably in this. Uh, European companies often do five ounces mm -hmm. per cup. I literally filled this thing up and took it out and poured it into our little cups that we use here. And I got six cups out of it. So I would say it's probably about six ounces. About six per. Okay. So what's the math? So just for frame of reference, um, I weighed the amount of water in here or used our graduated cylinder. It was 1800 milliliters. Um, 12 tablespoons is about 60 grams of coffee. So that is a 30 to one ratio of water to coffee. Normally when we pour over coffee, we're talking about 15 to 1, so we're short by about half the volume of coffee from the way we normally make it. Yeah. Are you ready to drink some not-so-good coffee? It's science. We gotta do it. It's science. Let's try it. So Jesse, while this pot is brewing, um, I opened up on social media to people to see if they had any questions about how they could brew better in a regular pot like this. You got a question there pulled up for us? Yes. Uh, on Facebook, as a regular department store coffee pot owner, I appreciate this. Is there any way to help with bitterness that always seems at play? Bitterness is a, is a tough one to pin down. Um, there, it's multidimensional. Um, it could be several factors. It could be a grind size. You could be too fine in grind and the coffee is taking too long to brew and you're getting over extracted that way. Right. You could also not be using enough coffee to your water and you're over extracting that way. So the um, ratio, which we've already addressed, may be a problem here. One right. other thing I thought of was the temperature of this warming bed down below. Great little feature if you want to keep your coffee warm, but the problem is it's very hot, too hot. So your coffee's going to go from tasting pretty good to tasting pretty bitter. In my opinion, that's probably what they're experiencing is that it's staying in the pot. The longer it stays in the pot, the more bitter it will be. Yeah, that's no good. Okay, Jesse, our coffee is it's finally done. We got one more question though. This yeah. from Instagram. I'm going to start pouring while you're doing that. Okay. Uh, so the question is related to the filters. Do you think there's any advantage to using different styles of filters in these coffee makers? Uh, yes and no. I think having a good quality filter is important. I'm yep. a big fan of like Melita filters. Yep. They have a nice thickness. They're not too big, but don't use bargain brand tissue looking filters. Right. Yeah, if it's Those. super thin, that may actually play a factor, yeah. but your standard fair uh, of filter and one yeah. that fits the size of the basket. Right, Don't, if it's too short, that's not the right filter. Right. It's gotta be the full size. Um, I'm also wondering if maybe they're talking about the ones that sometimes come with those, like those gold filters. Gold filter. It's a reusable style, right? Right. Uh, yeah. um, you gotta keep those clean if you're gonna use them. Yeah, like if, if yours is, I've had coffee out of those. They can produce more body sometimes, sure. and you know it's fine. You get a little grit in there. I think it's more like probably like French, French press. press. Yeah. yeah, but if yours is no longer gold, it's dirty. Things have gone bad. Yeah, you got to clean that thing, and just washing it in your soap and water probably isn't going to work. You got to get like some kafiza, get some, kafiza. some kind of professional coffee cleaner. If you don't know what kafiza is, we'll cover that in another video. It's the yeah. primo product for cleaning your coffee. Stuff. Maybe through the magic of editing, <laughs> will, one will magically appear here later. <laughs> All right, let's, it doesn't smell amazing. It's so hot. Blazing hot. It's very hot, folks. We're talking about a very hot cup of water. That, that's hot water. That is hot brown water. It is so terrible. I'm not saying this just because the math is wrong. 
This genuinely just tastes like hot water that sat somewhere for too long. It Maybe tastes like every roadside uh, yeah. diner I've ever gone to and gotten coffee. Right, where typically the same thing. They use a very small dosing of coffee. Two for, ounces. Yep, for a full a container bit. of coffee. That's the hard thing about uh, many of these quick serve coffees. If it's fresh, that's great. However, if they're not using enough coffee in the brew, it's never really going to taste <clears> good, no matter who roasted it. Yeah, this thing is blazingly hot right now. It is. Can't touch it. Both. Weak sauce and bitter all at the same time. But it's so over-extracted, yet so weak sauce. Yes, with a finish of mildew. <laughs> Possibly from the base. <laughs> it's not good, folks. That's what we're telling you. It doesn't taste great. But I think Steven and I got some ideas about how you might improve this. When we come back, we're going to talk about ways you might get a better cup of whatever this was supposed to be. Do I have to drink more of this? I don't think so. I'm out right. myself. <laughs> we'll be right back, folks. Okay, we're back. We got rid of that under-extracted coffee. Um, so Jesse, you had another question about brewing. Right. Um, question came in on Instagram about the shower head itself that disperses the water on top of the coffee and the size of it in relation to the basket. I think this is a pretty important topic. Yeah, and this is kind of a small shower head. Now, I don't know when it's brewing. It's possible it sprays out a little bit further. Um, this thing, when I opened up, the bed was reasonably flat yeah. for this thing. I, I, I was actually kind of pleasantly surprised. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a few things you can do to address that. You obviously can't make your shower head any bigger. There's nothing you can do there. And this one can't be modified. It. I've had some that I have modified and made the shower head bigger or adapted a bigger one on. There's nothing to be done here. So there's a couple hacks you could try. You could open this thing up, take the basket out, and give it a, a stir towards the end. The problem is, Jesse, what? You're gonna burn yourself. I would, I'm right. gonna guess that Hot if I did it, be shooting I would out burn this. myself. Yeah. Some pots stop when you flip it up. I, I, don't trust I this doubt thing. this one does. I don't think so. Um, so you could, you know, try to cycle it off. Okay. And stop it briefly. Um, you can either pick, take this out and or swirl just stir it, it while or it's stir. It. Yeah, right it's going just to agitate the ground, just to get better extraction. And that's probably actually a better move. Mm -hmm. um, and then close it up, restart it, and get it going again. So that's probably what I would recommend there to get a better extraction yep. out of your, you know, inexpensive pot. Correct. So we are going to brew a pot now with proper extraction. Yep. Um, we're going to use 1,200 milliliters. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to do a 16 to 1 ratio, so that's going to be 75 grams of coffee, which we've already all pre-measured out and everything. Yep. Um, and then we're going to brew that up, and we're going to see how that tastes. I'm down. Let's try Yeah, let's do it. We'll be right back. We're going to brew that up. Jesse, we are back once again. It's time to drink some coffee. The telltale steam is coming up the top. Yes, that means we're done. <laughs> With what we hope is a better pot of coffee than the first one we made. Yeah, we're gonna, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll try these out. We'll do some and, drinking and of some it. things, and we got some summaries that we're gonna give out afterwards. Yep, we'll talk about my, uh, other options. Maybe if this Cuisinart model we have here is not the one, but still is of that countertop convenience coffee maker, we can give you some suggestions of something that might right. fit the bill. Yeah, I did look this up today on Amazon. How much? Uh, I was surprised. It is $119 now. I thought this thing used to be like a $69 coffee maker, $69 coffee maker, but maybe that was like in the 50s or something. I'm I just going to say it. Don't spend that much money on this thing. That is a lot of money for this. Uh, there are better things than this for that kind of money. For that we'll, money, yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that. We can talk about it, yep. Um, so we're going to drink this. We also brewed up some of our coffee, our shop coffee, our batch brew that we serve here in the, sh in the shop. I don't think you could probably see what Jesse's pulling out there, but it doesn't really matter. <laughs> we have some AirPod coffee that Jesse's going to pour out for us. I'm going to try that. This is um, brewed on the Fetco. So two liters of coffee with 125 grams of coffee in the basket, appropriately sized for the roll. That sound says we're done. But appropriately sized coffee dosing to water for a two liter brewer like this one. All right, I don't want to taint it yet by having what I know the coffee's supposed to taste like versus all right, I don't think I'm gonna pour myself a full entire cup this time because I want it to cool down a little bit because this okay. brewer blew so hot. Um, once again, I, I think I might have touched on this, Jesse, in a prior video yeah. that, you know, coffee is better as it cools down a little bit. Um, and I, I think this is a, like a, a thing that coffee as it nears your body temperature is going to start tasting better. More of those flavors are going to come out. And the coffee's so hot, you you really can't taste it. It's just too hot for your taste buds to discern. Tastes like, that's what we always <laughs> tastes like hot. Tastes like hot. That is what we're saying. Mmm. Tastes like hot. hot. So let's see here. It smells better. Slightly better. 
you know, let me see versus this. It definitely still smells more like coffee than the first one. Yes. For sure. Yeah. Um, and just so you know, it's just so all things are the same. The, the Colombian is exactly what we brew here in the shop every single day. Yep. So that's why we chose this because we have a reference point of what we think it should taste like. What are some features you might look for in a different automatic coffee maker? I would look for the burner is not at all a thing for it's me. It's not a thing we want, right? We talked right. about this earlier. We don't want to overheat our coffee. That's what happens. Right. Either this take this thing, set it aside. Mm -hmm. If you're that person, you like to hang around your coffee forever, yeah. all day long, whatever. Put it in a thermos. Then, yeah, put it in a carafe. Yeah. Yep. You know, stainless steel carafe, a thermos. Mm -hmm. a, a better choice would be like a glass lined thermos, like a true yeah. thermos. I'm, I'm very sensitive to the taste of putting them in metal vessels. I just don't like it. So if you have a way to get a glass or a ceramic or porcelain, something that isn't going to leach coffee oils and hold on to them, that's one thing that I really hate about stainless right. coffee containers. It doesn't right. taste good. Um, another nice feature to have, oh, cheers, by the way. Let's, hey, uh, bud. This is uh, Let me try this. this I think it's coffee just coffee 2.0. Like what do we got? All right, that is tasting what? more like what it is. It's richer. Like, yeah. You've got you've, you've got the character of the coffee that we're we're aiming for. Um, this Columbia has a really nice kind of milk chocolate uh, character to it with with yeah. light fruit undertones. Um, so it's a nice balanced cup. That's why we serve it as a house here in the shop. You know, and what? I'm gonna I'm gonna it this way. Tastes pretty good. Yeah, I was gonna go right two hours, but I'm gonna wait just a minute longer because I want to let this cool okay. a few more moments and just see if I get something a little more out of it. That's so fair. some other features I like are um, I want to put this back here so I can point at things unnecessarily. Right. Um, I like to have a bloom feature, and what a bloom feature is that it brews for let's say 30 seconds or so, mm -hmm. gets the grounds wet, and just lets the, the grounds degas a little bit. Mm -hmm. So if you're buying our coffee where it's often very very fresh. It's going to still want to be gassed quite a bit, mm -hmm. um, so that could become a problem. Right. Um, another feature I, is when they br they brew hotter. So one thing you could always look for is a coffee pot that is approved of by the SCA, Specialty Coffee Association. Those are certified to brew at a certain temperature. I think it's above 200 degrees. They generally have the bloom feature. Um, one I definitely like, and I do not sell this. So I'm not trying to sell my coffee. This is not a plug. Um, is the Bonavita brand. Yeah. Um, Bonavitas are really good. Um, I recommend them all my family. I've brought them up for some family members. Um, they have one called the Metropolitan. Okay. That has a glass craft. It does have a burner, but the glass craft is smaller. The Bonavitas are smaller. They're eight cuppers, eight okay. European cups. So it's four real cups right. of coffee. Um, it brews very well. Very small basket. That's the only thing I don't like about yeah. it. Um, the basket is kind of small, but it does still hold the proper amount. It doesn't like bloom over mm -hmm. or anything like that. Yeah. Um, I like that feature. Um, and then proper hotting and then speed. Yeah. Jesse, we took some measurements. Yeah. Uh, this thing when I brewed the full pot, I measured it. It yep. was 11 minutes yep. and 33 seconds. Yep. And our, our shorter version still took over nine minutes to brew. So one of my all-time favorite brewers, but a much higher price scale, is the Mocha Masters. Ooh, um, that's a nice one. Yeah, the Mocha Masters are really sweet. I have a Mocha Master. They are made, I think, in Netherlands. Mm -hmm. um, they are handmade. They have a true copper burn or true copper element inside. That thing straight up brews in five minutes, a full pot. Again, though, it's only an eight copper. Oh, wow. They call it a ten copper, but I get about four and a half real cups out of it. That thing brews so fast, it brews at a proper temperature. There's no burner, it just brews into the stainless steel carafe. They do have models that have the burner, but again, I'm not, I don't love the burner. I don't love the, the burner. Gotcha. Um, the other one I have is the Ratio 8, which mm. is kind of like a... Um, like an automatic Chemex maker. It's an automatic right? Chemex yeah. maker, yeah. It's like automatic drip, except it brews in a Chemex. So that does have a really big shower head on it, very right. wide. Yeah. Um, and you do get a little bit of that set it and walk away feature, which you, you exactly. know, might want out of a machine like that. And that, like that. that is, honestly, that is my go-to every single day. I hate to do this to you, but you got to taste some All right, of let me, the let me take properly sip brewed here. Fetco brew. It, I won't say it's night and day, but it is a pretty dramatic All difference. right, it's not bad. That's not so bad, but drink that. It's not bad. All right, let me try this. <laughs> okay, wow. Wait, that is, that's way better. Wow. Yeah. That is so much brighter. Yeah. I didn't think it was to be that stark. Yeah, it's different. a pretty big difference. So, was, uh, truly, we have done the best we can with this machine. It yeah. cannot 
hold up against uh, our Fetco Brewer, which is a wonderful yeah. way we make the house coffee here. And our, it's, and it's not, yeah, our Fetco Brewer brews two liters and five minutes, so it's fast. It is a professional machine, a but you can get machines that brew equally as good and as nice. It can brew good bright cups of coffee or too poor. I mean, it's... All things considered, we appreciate you guys sticking with us through this very fun experiment into yeah. what you can do with an at-home coffee maker. We gave you some suggestions of different machines you can try and some hacks you can put onto uh, the one you've got. So, uh, in line with our recent videos, we do have a giveaway. Yeah, we're gonna give this bag, any bag of coffee you want. Ooh, anything you want now. Uh, within reason. Uh, <laughs> except for our limited stuff, you can't, you can't get one of those. But any of our regular line of coffees, you know, yeah. I'll hit you up. You leave a comment down below. Tell me what you're brewing on. Yeah. What are your challenges? Do you have a good at-home coffee pot that someone should buy? Because I'm right. happy to share it and we can test it in a oh, future video. Oh, yeah, that would be a great thing to hear about. I want to hear Let about that. Let us know. Um, and so hit us up with a comment down below. Let us know. Let us know what you're thinking of the videos, too. I always yeah. love to hear the comments. Suggestions for other styles of videos. We have a few in the works coming up soon. So thank you for sticking with us throughout the process. Yeah, I really appreciate you, everybody watching. And I appreciate all the likes and subscribes we've been getting. Our subscriber count is slowly moving up. Sorry for the long gap we've had. We just, you know, we're Busy slow times. operation. We're trying to get through them. We're going to keep, we're going to stick to Wednesdays. I'd like to shoot for everyone. Let's just say we're going to try to pull one out every two weeks. Love it. And, um... We're going to try to stick with that consistent schedule that we can head up and try to bring you consistent, consistent content. And I appreciate everybody watching. So I think that's all we got for this one, right, Jesse? That's all for this week. Thank you guys for all sticking right. around. Look forward to hearing from you. We'll See talk you to you soon. Time. Take care. Peace. Ooh, Jesse, look, steam. That means it's almost done. We cooked it. <laughs> Let's drink it. In our, you know, basket type thing. This is cone-shaped basket. It also has the coveted brew and pause. That's this guy right here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you can, you can do that thing where you can take out your coffee while it's brewing. Where's that coffee staying though? Yeah, never never do that. I don't think that's a good we're, idea. We're gonna talk about that too. I, I can no longer How are you doing with that? Good? Yes. Not good. Okay. This isn't the video. Did I break it? <laughs>